Hello and welcome to another video with me Mioni for Final Fantasy XIV. This time I want to take a brief look at the Adventurer Squadrons. We have three new dungeons to do with them and I was full to the brim of excitement for these new additions before the patch. With the new dungeons there's supposedly an increase in AI behaviour quality so let's take a brief look at what's changed. Immediately off the bat the new dungeons feel refreshing. In terms of experience gain there could be a great replacement for spamming power of the dead or removing horrible queue times if you're leveling an alt DPS class and are frankly not enjoying the DPS queue times. So what sort of levels can we gain? In the run up to patch 4.2 I was able to get everything I didn't have to 50 to at least 50 without touching Wanderer's Palace. Now I didn't touch Wanderer's Palace that much because time investment didn't equate to the experience I was gaining or wanted to gain. In general the new dungeons are a leg up either side of Wanderer's Palace with Desmal Darkhold being below at level 44 and Pharos Sirius and Copperbell Mines Hard both being above Wanderer's in the list of level 50 dungeons. You can see that for Copperbell and Pharasiris you actually get synced anyhow. It's just how fast you can run the new dungeons in comparison to Wanderer's Palace. Wanderer's Palace had all of those switches and valves to turn and required every tonbri to be killed for the lantern oil to grease each valve. There were quite a few detours needed and it was much less linear than some of the new dungeons added in 4.2. Now the EXP per hour will probably equate to less than Palace of the Dead overall, but if I do that place anymore I think I might die inside. If it's not someone trying to clear extra rooms we don't need, or triggering landmines and getting killed, either requiring us all to go again if we all die, a res, or to kill monsters to use the resurrection altar, no. I'm pretty sure enough is enough and these squadron missions could be the answer you're looking for. If you want to rely on yourself and your own decisions with your custom group of AI then this could certainly be a faster way to level your characters to 60 at least. The lazy will pay for the level boost to all of their alts through the Mog Station, but for things like Monk, Dragoon and to some extent Summoner and Ninja I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing so paying for a purchased boost would be completely counterproductive and I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much. I have lots of room to learn in the new adventurous squadrons, something which running Palace of the Dead hasn't really taught me anything at all. It may not be the most socially interactive way to level, but at least if I make a mistake I'm only taking my own time up and I'm learning for mistakes that ultimately will hopefully make me a better player at that role at the end game. Now the novice hall, let's face it, doesn't do anything and the pop-ups that try to teach you things are all well and good but nothing teaches a player like actually putting them into the action itself in an environment that's both helpful in terms of XP and not too bad of a loss if you fail inside of it. In essence I would love to one day see adventurer squadrons lowered in requirements to unlock them and hopefully used to teach players new to the game. All in all the new dungeons are a fresh scent of air for the time being and I will occasionally run them to level up my alts. The AI does seem to have improved slightly with less hangups between decisions and less obvious lag between command inputs so it's definitely improving but as the last time I looked at this feature it's quite a bit behind my eventual dream of running old raids with the AI. One day I'm hopeful. Let me know if you've tried the new dungeons in Adventurer Squadrons yet, what your thoughts have been on the new AI changes and I look forward to reading them and commenting below myself. If you've liked this video, whack me a like and I'll see you all next time.